So here is a recommended best practice for passing in uh, values to components. When you have something like this, uh, let's say a blog post, a blog post is basically an object in a typical blog application. And that object has a lot of properties to it. It has the title, it has the summary, it has the content, the published date, the published author, uh, the number of comments. There could be a whole lot of properties associated with the blog post. And now, as you look at the blog post style, as you develop the blog post style and it kind of evolves over time, this might need to show a whole lot more. Right now it's just showing the title and the summary. Let's say you want to add in the author, you want to add in the posted date. You can see that this is going to become bigger and bigger. You're going to have a lot more properties and that grows as the title itself grows. That's actually not very really convenient when you're using it. You're going to have this huge list of properties and then you don't really know what's doing what. So this recommended best practice for something like this is to pass in an object of a particular class. Instead of having each property being passed in as an attribute to this thing, what you do instead is use one property, which is going to be called, let's say I call it the post equals and then you pass in an instance of a blog post class and that class is going to contain all the attributes that the blog post title is going to need it's going to contain an attribute for the title the summary and whatever else it needs and as this style component evolves over time this doesn't have to change you just need to put in different attributes extend the class itself blog post class and then extend the component to pick up those values and then uh, use them. So rather than have a uh, hundred different attributes and a hundred different input uh, annotations over here, you're just gonna have one uh, attribute and one input annotation of a particular object type. I'm going to create that class now and I'm gonna use the Angular CLI to create that. I'm going to use the ng generate class and then I'm gonna call this the blog post. What this is going to do is create a simple class called blog post and uh, it's going to export it. I'm going to create a couple of attributes here. I'm going to create the same thing, title, which is going to be a string and then summary, which is a string as well. And I can add more, but for the sake of this course, I'm going to leave it as just these two. Now here, what I'm going to do is use that instance to pass in the value. So what I'm going to do is in the blog post blog list component, which is over here, I'm going to create a new instance of the blog class, and I'm going to pass that instead of passing in the individual values. So here I'm going to create a property called blog post, which is going to be an array of blog posts and in my ng on in it I'm going to say blog post let me initialize it to an empty an empty array and then here I'm going to say blog new blog post and I'm going to create a constructor which lets me pass in different values so that I don't have to do a whole lot of initialization so I'm going to go to my blog post here and then I'm going to create a constructor and uh, I'm going to create a private title actually let me make this public And now I can get rid of the stuff here. So this public is a TypeScript construct which lets me assign the inputs that are passed in to my constructor as member variables, public member variables. So I'm gonna use the shortcut to A, define two member variables to block pose and B, use a constructor which takes in those values and then assign it uh, automatically. So I'm gonna save this. And now here in my blog post, I can pass in a couple of values. So I'm going to say blog blog post one and then 
summary one. Make this two and then blog posts dot push. In fact, I can take this so that I don't have to assign this here. I'm pushing two instances to this dot blog posts. And now I can use this in my blog list component. And let me get rid of the stuff here. So I want the post to be the first element. I'm gonna hard code this. I'm gonna use just the first element in blog posts. So I want to pass in the argument, which is blog posts of zero. So I'm going to do blog posts of zero. And now I'm passing in something to post, which is not an inline value. I don't want post to pass in the value, which is the string blog post of zero. I want it to evaluate this and take the value from the component. And the way to do this is by using square brackets here to tell Angular that you want to evaluate this thing against the component class and then take in that value. So I'm going to pass in the value of the first element in the blog post array to the post attribute. And now accepting it is fairly simple. It's pretty much the same way we used to do this before. Instead of this being a string, I'm going to accept post, which is an instance of blog posts, and I'm gonna get rid of the summary. Now that I've accepted an instance of blog posts in my component template, I'm going to use that instance member variables instead of accessing it, accessing the values directly. So I have the instance as post, so I'm going to say post.title, and then post.summary. So it is going to look at the post element to get the value of the blog post instance, and then it's going to look at the title and summary because those are the member variables of this blog post class that we have created. I'm going to make sure I've saved everything, and let's do an ng serve. So now we should see just one blog post, which is the first element in our blog post list component, which is going to be this guy here. I'm gonna refresh the page, and here you see that one blog post element. Now, expanding this to all the elements in blog posts is fairly simple as well. Now here, instead of passing in that one value, what I'm gonna do is use ng far. I'm gonna use the ng repetition directive in order to print this as many times as there are elements in that blog post array. And I do that by passing it. I'm gonna make this into a new line so that it's easy to read. I'm going to do a star ng far, and then the syntax is let loop element off the collection element, which is blog posts. And then here I'm going to pass in that loop element post. And this is a star, not a hash, press save. And when I refresh, I get the contents of the two blog posts, this time iterating over the blog post array and passing in the argument, which is the blog post instance. This is how you would typically build these kind of components. You don't wanna have a whole lot of parameters. You wanna consolidate them into sensible object instances that you pass in in one shot. And those object instances contain all the related elements in them. So this makes it uh, the definition of your component last longer and not change so often.